how do you even do this anymore? <clears throat> what episode is this? Episode 11, Blindsided. Season 7, Episode 11, Blindsided. Hey guys, it's Wahima, but just call me Wah. Melanated! <laughs> Welcome to my recap of 90 Day Fiance. This is Season 7, Episode 11, Blindsided. Hello! How are you? I haven't seen you guys in such a long time and I'm so sorry for my absence. I just got so busy during the holiday season and then after that I took a break I didn't know I needed. But if you guys have been following me on this channel you know that I did put up some lives in December um, with Chris and I did put up a live earlier this week uh, talking about Love After Lockup and 90 Day Fiance. So you guys get ready. She's back on. She's ready. She's got her, her schedule in order. She's She's got her 2020 goals written out and planned and so we're just gonna jump right into this episode so the first couple that we're gonna start off with is Natalie and Mike Whew, Lord, what a letdown this couple was. I mean, it had so much promise in the beginning. We were so excited about their relationship. It seemed so real and genuine. And he went to Kiev and just took us on a roller coaster. First, it was her fault freaking out about running and exercising and then her wanting a baby really, really bad. And then literally the next week, she started crying because he believed in aliens and she wanted him to believe in her like really orthodox like church, you know? And then everything was fine, and then he's worried about the K-1 visa, and then he confronts her in the most aggressive way and basically accuses her of doing this process with somebody else. And so then she freaks out, and then the next day they wake up, they have a confessionals, and the producers ask her if she loves Mike, and she says she can't answer that question. It's like, all of a sudden she can't answer the question. When she was telling this man she loved him earlier, but now she can't answer the question because women are flighty and women are allowed to just, you know, be whatever and, and make their decision. And it's the man's job to like be the one who loves the most. And it's the woman's job to just eeny, meeny, miny, mo you pick or something. But it's just so odd. And I'm starting to not like her. And it's weird because it's like the exact opposite happened between her and Tanya. Like I thought I was gonna love Tanya and I now don't. And then I thought I was gonna, I didn't even have an opinion about her, but I knew I loved her and then now I just don't. So anyways, y'all, um, she thinks that he owes her an apology and I don't see why, neither does he. And he doesn't allow her to, you know, carry this thing on. He needs to get to the airport. So he gets into the cab. I guess she texts and says that she's coming down. So she goes down, gets in the car with him and then starts to be like, cuckoo, baby, don't be mad at me type behavior. Like everyone loves you, Mike. Your mommy loves you. Your daddy loves you. I love you. Your friends love you. Don't be upset. Like she's not even acknowledging the fact she just threw all air no net straight into his suitcase his mother's ring he wants to be serious but she is just trying to i guess patch things up at the last second and you know in my perfect world you would apologize to me and then i would say oh no it's not it's not your fault it's really my fault and then we'd hug and kiss and everything would be perfect but it's not perfect world why would that need to be the chain of events why can't you just apologize Mike is picking up on that and he's not down with it. So they get out of the cab once they get to the airport and he's like, well, what do you want to do? You want me to call you a cab so you can get back and go home? And she's like, no, I want to walk you to the gate. And so she's like, carry me on your suitcase like you did when you first got here. And he's like, no, let's go in. And there's a confessional where he's just like, there's a lot going on and I don't know what to say. And you know, I got to think about it. And I don't know if this is the last time I'm going to see her. And then her confessional, she just says, I do have feelings for him. And then she looks longingly at him and he looks back at her. She just like runs off to him. She says something to him. His response is, no, I think you're acting like a child. She's staring at him and he's like, do you understand me? And she's just literally staring at him with those big blue eyes. And he's like, so, and she's just like, And it's just like awkward. And then he's like, okay, well, I'm going to the gate. You know, do you want to come? And she's like, no. He's like, okay, can I get a hug? And she's like, no. And it's just like, again, her emotions just flipped on us once again. And now we're just left having to catch up and figure out what's going on. And he just gets on a plane. He gets home to Uncle Bo. He makes pancakes every Sunday morning like he normally does. He calls out for Uncle Bo like, hey! Hey, hey, hey! 
And Uncle Bo comes out from wherever and is like, what up, brother? And so he tries to explain to Uncle Bo what's going on. And Uncle Bo's like, I've had women. And I'm just like, who? I want to know these women. I want them on tape and I want them to tell me why. So he gives some advice that we can't understand. Mike is just like, I don't know. They should not have even been on 90 Day Fiance. They literally should have been on before the 90 Day. She never came to the US, as far as we know. There could be more surprises up TLC sleeves. We do not know. But anyways, that's the end of them. Now let's move on. First, let's hydrate because girl, I'm already tired. Next couple that we're gonna talk about is Tanya and Sinjin. All right, so this episode begins with Sinjin bringing Tanya some room temperature water. She seems like a room temperature water type of gal, like the kind of gal who's like, it's too cold. You know my teeth are sensitive. She's like excited about this room temperature cup of water. He's happy to bring it to her. He's happy that she's there. They've been fighting, but now, you know, his boo is finally there and he gets to love on her as much as he wants to. They decide they're gonna meet with an astrologer slash divinator named Daisy October, who I have already reached out to because I need her to help me. Anyway, so Daisy October basically tells them about like their sun and their moon risings and what house on what minute they were born and whatnot and tells them about themselves. She also asks them whether or not they think that their relationship is a soulmate type relationship. Now I find this question to be a little baiting, right? Because what, unless someone simply just doesn't believe in the idea of soulmates, what person in that kind of relationship would say no? Like they have to say yes, right? Or else there will be trouble. But guess what Tanya does? Tanya says no. And what is there? Trouble. Because he's like, yeah, I do think, you know, she's my soulmate. The way we met was so spontaneous and it just kind of like came out of nowhere. You know, she was just like hanging out in South Africa, drunk at a bar and they met each other and it was kismet, you know? So he thinks that they're soulmates. And she's like, yeah, I mean, um, I do think that we did know each other in a past life. Like he could have been a friend of mine. He could have been my brother. He could have been a lot of things, but I don't know, like really. Sinjin's like, so who, so why don't you think I'm your soulmate? Like who, why? She's like, well, because I just don't, I mean, I don't, I don't want to explain it. I mean, it's something I did want to tell you. And I just, I mean, what I do, I don't, what I'm saying is, is that I love you. And I definitely think you should be the father of my children. But soulmate? And Sinjin's like, well, I don't understand. Explain more. She's like, I'll talk to you later. He's like, no, 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 let's talk about it now. Just tell me. Just say it. Which is, you know, at the point where as any sane person, you know, when someone just says, go on ahead and just say it, just say it. You really shouldn't say it. But again, Tanya says it. She's like, well, I think that my first love was my soulmate. And I just know that in this lifetime, we weren't meant to be together, which is fine. And I'll just meet him next lifetime. I guess I'll see you next lifetime. That sounds so deep. And Sinjin is like, oh, so not only am I not your soulmate, but you have actually already met your soulmate. So he's like, I need a moment. So, you know, that's the end of their segment. And I just, I feel bad for the guy. She's dug at him for so many different things. And he's like, then why am I going through with this? if you don't even believe that we are soulmates because you've decided you want to settle down and I'm that person that's just going to have to settle down with you and be your sperm bank. Should I move to the US and left everything behind for you and, and I supported you when you went to learn how to make teas and heal bodies and now you're telling me that you do not think I am your soulmate? So why for come am I here? If you do believe in soulmates and you're saying that I'm not he because you already met him. Now, if you don't believe in soulmates, so be it. Let's not talk about soulmates then. You know what I'm saying? Let's just not talk about it. Let's not go to an astrologer. So the next couple that we're going to talk about is Juliana and Michael. I was literally going to say, well, wait, 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 here, these people. Okay, I was literally going to say Juliana and Sarah. <laughs> the last two episodes have just been Juliana and Sarah and they've gotten so close and we love them. In their segment, Juliana is getting ready for her wedding. Really, her family just ain't shit. Like they didn't even call her for a wedding. Maybe they did when she was walking down the aisle. Maybe they got the times wrong, but like she was real, real hurt about it. 
And I felt bad for her, but she had two Judys there and they were in full support speaking their native language. And then they even had videos of one of her best Judys who was in Korea working girl. And I was just like, okay, all right, Juliana has the love. She's feeling it. She's like, oh, I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. Meanwhile, you have Max and Cece. They've came back and we're just so grateful that they have. Max tells Cece that he's speaking at the wedding because they're, you know, asking each other how they feel about the wedding. And Cece says she's a little nervous, but not because she doesn't like Juliana, just because she's nervous in general. I mean, there's a whole ass camera crew here. And Max is like, I'm nervous too, but I'm speaking. And Cece's like, you are? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, well, what are you going to say? He's like, you'll find out. So their mom, Sarah, is officiating the wedding. And only thing I can think when I saw her wedding dress is like, Sarah, girl, did you not go shopping and buy a dress for this wedding? Why are you officiating in this dress that looks like it's from low-key 1995? Maybe not 1995. Okay, 2005. You know what I'm saying? It's just not giving me 2019. Feels like she should have like some like square-toed strappy sandal, you know? Mike was trying to fit into a different tuxedo and it, he didn't. So he had two tuxedos. He's like one for if I lose weight, one if I don't lose weight. He didn't lose weight. So he's wearing the other one and he had to hurry up and get a dress. So before that, he had his bachelor like situation with his brother who looks like him. And I'm just like, you know what? Sometimes there are people who look like Michael and sometimes there are people who look like Sinjin. And I, it, I, Michael and his family just look uh, like just so nondescript. You know? And then his brother looks nondescript. I hope Cece works it out because she looks like him. And I don't want Cece to look nondescript because she's great. And uh, Juliana looked really beautiful in her dress. You know, it was a good dress she picked out. It was a good dress. So the next couple that we're gonna talk about is Stoneface and Stupid. The idiot in stone face is what I call them. So both of them really show their ass in this episode and mm, it's not good. So here's what it is. Stoneface is getting ready, right? Because it's Everett who is Blake's best friend, the black guy with the dreads who's dating Rita with the like lips. Blake gets there to pick her up and she's like, why don't we skip the first part and just meet them at the party and just you and I go have dinner? And he's like, what? No, the the first part is the most intimate part. Like that's the part where all the friends and family go and, and sit down and have dinner. Like that's the part that you are honored to be invited to. And that's my best friend. Like, no, we gotta go. This is what we planned. You knew the plan. And she's like, yeah, but I haven't seen you all day. And I just really want to spend time with you. And I feel like I'm more important. And he's like, well, we have, we have all the time to do this, but why today? She's like, I just don't, I just don't want to go. I want to have dinner with you and we can go to the party afterwards. And he's just like, okay. And this is where he fucked up because he shouldn't have said okay. He should not have, but he decided he was gonna say okay and then be passive aggressive for the rest of the night. So then they go to this place, I guess that they've gone before because I think that's where him and Everett and Rita went when they went all out together as a couple. And he orders like a, a slushy drink. You know what I mean? Not, he didn't order like, you know, some Callahan neat. You know, he didn't order Jack on the rocks. He ordered a slushy, fruity drink. And she's like, oh, you're drinking already? And he's like, yeah, it's e like everyone is pre-partying where they're at right now. I was gonna come out and celebrate with my friend, but now I'm here with you, so. And she's like, well, we're having a good time as she orders her Cobb salad and he gets like an Obama burger or whatever. And it's just so awkward because he becomes super passive aggressive with her and then calls her stupid. And I'm just like, I can't even be on your side at this point. Like, I know she's selfish, obviously, for deciding at the last minute that he shouldn't go be with his best friend that he's known longer than he's known her because she wants to go and have a nice dinner with him. And then they don't even go anyplace nice. They just go to some like LA spot and sit on like bench tables, you know, and stools. Like, it's not even if they have like a sit down dinner someplace fancy. No, no. And she's like sipping between ice water and iced green tea with, I guess, like, ugh, just, I hate her. Okay. And then she's like, well, I'm more important than Everett and I don't want you drinking tonight. This is the last drink you're going to have. You know what it means when you drink then no more kisses because I don't want to smell your alcoholic breath. And I'm like, girl, who hurt you? Who hurt you? Because I don't drink. 
And I'm not against people who drink. I mean, definitely do I want to be around people who are drunk? No, as soon as people start getting stupid, I'm out. Like, I get it. I, I'm, I'm a more reasonable version of Jasmine when it comes to that. I don't go to clubs, I hate parties, but if I moved to another country to be with my fiance, and part of my duties as far as being there is just being a chick on his arm that he wants to show off to all his friends. Like I'm gonna have to recognize that at a certain point. And I'm gonna have to go and have the awkward meals where I don't wanna be. And then maybe I'll tell him I have a migraine and cut out and go hang out with my sister. But what I'm not gonna do is prevent him from going to the most intimate part of the party situation. Then tell him that I'm not gonna kiss him because he's drink. he had one drink and then tell him he can only have one drink of the night and how much better he's going to be than everybody else because he's choosing not to drink. And he, I mean, they just both just jacked up. And then he, when he called her stupid, I had to literally rewind it three times. He's like, no, stupid. And I would have been like, fuck you. I am definitely going to my sister's house. Let's just cut this. You go ahead and go to the pre-party. I'm sorry that I wasted your time, but you cannot call me stupid. Ever. Not even for play play. Not even in passing. Not never in your life. So she goes and stands outside. And I thought a little miss was calling herself a Uber, but no, no, she was waiting for him to pay the bill so that he can come out and call her an Uber to go to her sister's house. And I was like, Blake, you're in for a lot of trouble if you are thinking you wanna be with this woman. She wants you to change everything about your life to support her. She wants to be a stay-at-home mom from a guy who doesn't even have a stable job. You're never gonna live up to that. So you should just send her back home and tell her to put herself in the lottery and try again. So she goes to her sister's house and then they start to speak Finnish to each other, which is a language I have never heard. And I didn't know what to think of it. I was just like, <clears throat> I, I've never heard any language like it. Like it's not a Slavic language. You know what I'm saying? It's not an Asian language. It's not a like island language or an indigenous language or an African language or an Arab language. It is a language I have never heard. And I didn't know what was happening. Like it was just like sounds, just sounds. And I just wanted to hear more of it. So I just kept listening to it because I'm like, I don't even know where one word begins and another word ends. Like I, it's just like, I, and I'm usually never like that. Normally I'm like, oh, I can, I can see how that could be a word. Like I, can, I get that. Like, shay shay and like, come samidan and like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying it wrong, but I can like hear it. Like, arigato kojaimaste. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I can hear it, but finish. I was just like, what does Dutch sound like? I need to like, just go to that part of the world and listen to them talk because I, have if somebody were to, if that were been a trivia game show and somebody were just to say that language, I would not know what I was hearing. You know what I'm saying? Just for somebody who like, likes to know a lot of different things. It was just so educational in that moment. And her sister basically tells her that she needs to consider Drake, uh, Blake's position, not Drake. Oh God, if she were dating Drake, I would be so angry. She and her sister are talking and her sister is trying to calmly tell her that she's wrong and that she really needs to consider Blake's position and that she needs to be more open and more understanding. And yeah, you know, going to the club and being in loud environments aren't, isn't your thing. However, you did move to the US and now you want to marry this person so you can get your visa. So you are gonna need to play the game a little bit better. And then I'm staring at her sister's face and I'm staring at her face and it's just so much Botox and fillers and it's just it's too much the next couple that we're gonna talk about is Angela and Michael okay what is all of that on Angela's chest right now in the comment section somebody tell me what is that on Angela's chest it looked like railroad tracks or like burn marks that like just tight like she looked like she was tortured by somebody who had a curling iron and just went through and just like burned little rectangles into her skin and i'm just like do you need to exfoliate at some point in the car when she's on her way to the embassy i just wanted to like exfoliate just a light sugar scrub 
and just like get it all off. It is so unattractive. But you know, Angela don't care about looking any kind of way. She decides she's gonna go to the embassy and ask them what's the what, and what's going on. As a petitioner, she has the right. As an American, she has the right to step on embassy soil. Officer, it's an emergency. I have a K-1 visa problem. And the officer's like, <laughs> no, it's not. Come back, make an appointment, okay? Make an appointment and come back tomorrow. Thank you. And so she goes back and she finds Michael and she's very upset that Michael wasn't just standing there waiting for her. And they go to have a beer afterwards. But he tells her that his family would like to host dinner for them. So she's like, uh-oh, now they're gonna be pressuring me to get married here. I don't like this. I don't like it. I mean, I feel like her instincts were spot on. So they are getting ready to go and Michael is putting on like a great dashiki situation and she's getting ready and she finds out that they need to bring a present and that present is a microwave and Angela's like, I'm tired of Michael just popping up these things that need to happen. And I'm just like, but I mean, you've already been there three times. You know that you have to bring a gift. So she says, okay. They stop on the side of the road and they go into a shanty shack that has electronics in it. And she's like, we should go to a store. And he's like, this is a store. And she's like, oh. And I'm like, listen, you know, for her to be shocked. <laughs> she's like, oh, and we're in there. And the man tries to charge her 95 US for a microwave. And I was like, oh, hell no. Michael's like, eh? And Angela's like, what? And he tells her how much that is in US dollars. And she's like, no, no, no. This costs $50 at the Walmart. <laughs> and I'm like, you were damn right. It cost $50 at the Walmart. And that kettle costs 25 at the Walmart. She said, like, look, I got 15,000 on me. This you gonna take it or leave it? And he's like, oh, okay, I'll take it. And I'm like, yeah, he was just trying to upsell you. Like, mm -mm. she's a little taken aback about the water kettle because she's like, why do I have to give this person a gift too? I just don't want them to believe that every time I come over, I'm going to bring them gifts. And I'm like, well, you best believe it because that's what is expected. And she gets to the house. She's the youngest the, or the junior wife. So she's expected to go cook. They have her fry some plantains, which look delicious. And she comes out with the plantain. They all sit down and she's like, I don't even cook at home. And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> what is Angie baby going to do? She's like, I don't even cook at home. I guess I'll do this. And you know, I'm uncomfortable with it and I'm outside my comfort zone. And I'm just like, Angela, you are marrying a 30 year old man from a different country. You're just gonna have to do everything they ask you to do. I know you're the head of house in Georgia, girl, but when you are not in Georgia, you are not at the head of the house and you cannot make your own decisions, okay? You need to follow by these people's rules and their like culture. So then this is where it gets dirty. And this is where I'm just like, oh, Angela wasn't prepared and Michael is going to hear it. So they sit down and they basically tell Angela that if you don't get married to Michael here and just start this process so y'all can try to get a baby, then he might as well just let you go and start on working on a family here. Because age and time are not on your side. You all don't have time. And he is the youngest of our family. And we need to make sure that he procreates. This is really none of y'all's business. Now, I know she didn't say that, but she wanted to. Telling him it's really none of y'all's business. I mean, the thing is, though, it is. In her culture, maybe it's not. But in their culture, it 100% is. She already got the approval of his mother for some odd reason. But no one is going to just ignore the fact that their youngest virile child is just gonna settle with this old American woman unless something positive like children and or a visa come out of it. Angela's got a lot of thinking to do. And I support that family. Stop wasting Michael's time and let him move on to somebody else. And just tell him the God's honest that she cannot have a baby and it costs upwards to 25K for her to try to have one. And she don't got that kind of money. All right, you guys, so that's the end of this episode. Let me know what you guys thought. What did I miss? I'm sure I missed something. I don't have any notes in front of me. So let's have a kiki and a conversation down in the comments section. Um, I'm so happy to be back. I'm gonna be more regular. Uh, let's engage, let's talk to each other on Instagram. Let's talk to each other in the comments sections. And you guys have a fantastic day. Remember to be you, be true, and find your place. Bye. Oh, if you want to be you, be true, and find your place t-shirt, just check out below. I have it all linked.